you are welcome to the Guru's perspective. I thank you for always being with us. I thank you for your subscription. I thank you that you view everything. I thank you that you drop your comments. I give you much, much bigger thank that uh, you always share generously. Thank you and thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, let us move. Today, there is a topic that is bothering my heart. And that is why I decided to bring it up. Otherwise, I would have been going with the most trendy issue in the whole world today. The Palestinian, no, let me not use the word Palestinian, the Israeli Hamas problem. But because of this, that is international, but this is, this is more something that is affecting Nigeria. That is why I believe we should please discuss it. Now, it has to do with the inability of Nigeria to meet the uh, 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 production quota given to us by uh, the uh, OPEC. Why can't we meet the quota? Because OPEC, we can produce as much as 2 million barrels. We can produce 3 million barrels. We have it on the ground. But how come that even 1.7 million barrels given to us by as a quota, daily production quota by OPEC, we are not able it is just a few weeks ago that we crossed the barrier of coming to 1 million before we now arrive 1.2 million barrel. And somebody just telling me that last week we were able to either produce 1.3 million barrel or 1.4 million barrel. For now, the highest we've ever gone to is that 1.4 million barrel. Yet, this is a country that was producing about 3 million barrels in those days. What has changed? And the days we were producing about 3 million barrels, you know, the, the uh, oil wells, there are not as many as we have there today. How come that this? And we need the money. We need the foreign nations now than ever. Because we all have been hearing how the economy has been bastardized. The good news is that even the APC that blew up the economy totally, that made us to now remain without foreign nations, not even to pay school, uh, our children's school fees overseas, not to import anything. Is the AP, same APC that is telling us now how bad the thing is. And the other day I was saying that a bulletin number wife who said that my husband is not a magician. I now want to, I told her, no, your husband says she would, I now want to proceed to, to her. If the place is as destroyed as it has been today, the only thing that remains a fact there is that the total destruction is carried out by the APC. Of course, one cannot say Bolatinubu because Bolatinubu was not the man in government then. Because it doesn't matter what type of good advice you bring. If the man running the affairs, if he refused to take them, what would you do? You would just leave the things. So, Nigeria, so, and if there's more time that we need to meet the quota, our production quota, as released to us by OPEC, it is now. But I have pain, therefore, sleeping at night knowing that Nigeria cannot meet it. Why? Let us ask the why question. Then let us find solution to it. Believing that the present government will want to take a good solution. Because the man has been within the system for too long, and I believe he will want to leave a good legacy. I believe, I hope that, that Bolatinu will want to leave a good legacy. So if there is example, I mean, uh, an idea that will bring us up on this matter, because lack of foreignness, is, lack of meeting our expectation uh, production quota as given to us by open, is destroyed the country more, 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 and more. So the question is, that uh, why can't we meet our quota. These are my findings. Please let us listen to them. Let us see for them. Let us see for them. When you throw your net to the deep, it is not everything you bring out that are fish that we take home, either for sales or for consumption. There are some things that the net will bring up. So that is why you bring the net to dry land, then you suck the fish out. Every other thing that is either you throw them on the land or you throw them back to the sea. 
But we should not just condemn. Let us analyze this. By Friday, it indicates that it is still this stealing, you know, the stealing of our crude cool oil. It is why we have not been able to meet the repair quota. Let us assume that we are able to meet the quota at this time, that the price of Brent and Co. And Co. had gone up. Wouldn't we have known how far would have gone by the foreign nation we would be receiving? Even at $100 per barrel, if that is the issue, how much would that be today, demand? Because the price had moved from 80 to 90, 90 to something, is going around $100 per barrel now. That would have given us hope. But the hope we don't have because we cannot meet the, the, the quota given to us. I was told in my investigation. And this is investigation that can be co collaborated even from the security agencies angle, if they will tell you the truth. The government know this. The government know this because the government has both the security agencies, the government apparatus, we are talking of people like the Nigerian Navy, the Nigeria Army, the Nigeria Air Forces from Maria, then the civil, civil defense, the Nigeria Police Force, the DMI, the NLPC apparatus, and many others that all of us may not know, which are already established federal government institutions. These are institutions of the federal government. Then it is the federal government equally that employ the non-state holders, the non, I mean the non-state uh, stakeholders, the non, those who are not apparatuses of the government, uh, not properties of the federal government. We are talking, for example, Titani, Abita, Nita, Abita, whatever, Tompolo uh, company that is guiding the oil in, is making, is, is there making waves, as we will see it, many others, to, uh, uh, Asari Dukubo told us the other day that he was secure, the war he was hired, he was the one who brought peace between Abuja and Kaduna, the Aziz of Shiroru, he brought peace and all those ones. There are many others, because a time it was that Adams Ganinu was uh, of the OPC, the Odua People's Congress, were given the right, the contract to safeguard all the pipelines, and there are many others. And we now know that even uh, some, some people in Delta State were supposed to be hired to uh, secure the oil industry within the Delta State zone, and I, it is uh, Ovioma Agege, the former deputy uh, president of the Senate, who contested the governorship uh, run in Delta State, which is like he failed on the field and is moving to tribunal. Tribunal has said he did not win anything. He's moving to uh, court of appeal, from court of appeal. So all this, they are employed by the government. So for this reason, the government cannot pretend not having the full information because the non-state actors, they are properties of the government. Is the government also that operates its own actors, which I have just enumerated, I've just mentioned them. So if this is the truth, why would the government, would, can the government come out and tell us we don't have the facts of why we cannot meet our quota? Nobody should accept it because they are in charge. They have facility to everything that is happening there. But then let us look at what is happening. What, we, what is happening there, if you go to the zone now, is that in spite of everything being said on a daily basis, the stealing of the oil is going on massively. This one has gone beyond busting of pipeline. Because the flow, the rush that will come out, how much of oil can you scoop? We are talking of crude now. How much of it can you scoop? If you bust it, not officially, not technically as official, how much can you scoop? You cannot scoop much. So it is not direct connecting to the ring, whatever the professionals will call it, direct switch, switching off of something. For example, a vessel came to Nigeria, um, was it last year? Yes, last year, and the vessel loaded about 10 million, I mean, 10, yes, 10, is it 10 or 3 million? I think 10 million uh, barrels of crude. And the vessel loaded and sailed out of Nigeria. It came to Equatorial Guinea, it was Equatorial Guinea, that the Navy of that country arrested the vessel. 
Then Nigerian Navy now, uh -huh, John, I say, we are going to meet them. We escort the vessel back. They escorted the vessel back. But primarily, how would a, a vessel come into Nigeria and stay for over 10 days, loading crude? Is that where pipe was? Did that operation look like a place that pipe was uh, bust? No. It is directly collected to the ring and bloody from there. And for 10 days and 10 nights, this vessel was operating conveniently. There is no one Nava personnel, Nava institution, Nava control command that saw the vessel. Until the vessel say that of Nigeria territorial waters. If not because of this nebulous synergy we have with uh, other countries in the coast, but it was the, uh, the Navy of Equatorial Guinea that arrested this vessel. Before it took days before Nigeria went there. And by the time the vessel was escorted back to Nigeria, I am not sure if the total loaded crude was still on board that vessel. Because these are the technical. So this is one thing. And this is obviously taking place on a daily basis. And what would that tell you? That would tell you that even the state uh, actors, the state-owned actors, that is our own institution, had failed. And they failed because there, was, there is a compromise. Or I call it synergy. They failed because there are too many top Nigerians that are in this business. They failed because some prominent operators of the communities, they were there. They failed because most of the oil uh, rings, are they even given to people in the Niger Delta? No. It's spread all its Nigerian product. That was the argument of Mohamed Gambo during the National Conference put together by Bullock Jonathan in 2014. Is Nigerian property. Yes, we agree. So the, uh, this oil waste are given to people across the country, uh, across the country, from north to south, from Kutuwezi to Katangura, from uh, Potako to uh, Anabra, from Manabra to border, Cameroon border, either Cameroon border in uh, uh, top of uh, Mabila Plateau or whatever. So if this thing is happening, how come that the government cannot stop it? So we now identify why we cannot meet the OPEC uh, quota is that the oil is being stolen. That stealing process is still on. The process that make the Nigerian Navy to be to 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 acquire this, acquire that, monitoring everything. So meaning at a covenant time and an agreed time, somebody will switch off all the surveillance material. He said the sea is calm now. Of course, the word this let the sea be calm. I have used it many times in my some previous previous video. So the sea the sea will be calm. But now that we know there is no truth because the there is no shortage of crude in our ground. It's still there. Now, when Nigeria had lesser oil wells, we were producing 3 million barrels. Today, everywhere oil well, the, this one, I just want the contract of oil well, this one has oil well, and we have it all over. We cannot even produce 1.7 quota. Left. If we are ready to produce 2 million, o OPEC is ready to grant it for us. If we are ready to produce 2.5 million op uh, barrels a day, OPEC is ready to grant it for us. But we are not doing it because the thing that is there is being produced, but is being stolen away. So all the mechanisms that are guiding it, if they allow this thing to be stolen, then now that we have identified, why can't we meet the quota? The next question is that, what remedy can we deploy for this to be elevated so that Nigeria can at least produce the given quota from OPEC and so that Nigeria can make the money. And if the money made is being managed properly by the government, we will come out of this woods we are because today oh, our situation is bad. Let us turn around when the guru comes back to look at solutions, remedies, the reason for the class. But now we have identified that the code is there. We are producing it, but it's be stolen. The guru shall be back.